Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, Brother Brand Ambassador, and I'm looking down because I've got a super awesome, fun project for you. Yeah. So my fishing team loved it. I brought it on the boat last weekend. It's a quilted grocery bag. Well, customized. I added a few extra things. So are you ready for the sew along? I'm so excited about this. So I sent an email earlier this morning. If you missed it, be sure to let me know. I'll forward it to you. It just gave you the dates. And also, if you go to Brother's Instagram page, they gave you a list of dates and supplies as well. So this whole thing is done live. It's all done through video. I did promise, though, after today's video, tomorrow morning, uh, I will post the blog so you can, if you need to download the supplies or things like that. I actually don't even think it's downloadable. It's just you can copy it if you want. So, And I will list all the videos. So in case you're watching this later and you're like, how do I catch up? you'll be able to have no problem finding it. So welcome everyone, say hi, tell brother how excited you are for this super fun sew along in representation of National Sewing Month. So I'll give you a closer look at this in just a second. So I see you all rolling in. We are live streaming on Brother Sewing YouTube and Facebook pages. And it's so nice to see all the familiar faces. Gotta love the wolf pack. Everybody's rolling in here. This is gonna be so much fun. So I think Cindy last week, or maybe on Tuesday, said, hey, uh, is this for beginners or advanced? Well, you know what? It's for a beginner, but I'm going to give you some advanced ideas. How's that? So here's how it's gonna roll. I'll give you the supply list today. We'll go over that. And I'm also gonna tell you some tips and show you some tips on how to embellish your fabric. You gotta embellish your fabric. I can't have a bag without embellishing. So it's gonna be over a, quite a few, I think it's five lessons total. Today, we're going to go over the supplies. I'll show you what I have, and we're going to embellish fabric. In the next lesson, we also have putting the straps together. We've got putting the pocket together, and it also has a cute zipper at the top. So there's a lot going on for this bag, and it's drawn over a period of weeks. So you can sew on the weekends or whenever you're free and keep up until the next lesson. Sound good? Everybody's saying, yay. Oh, it's so nice to see you all. All right, so let's get right to it. I think I'm going to show you what's in the bag. And we have a few things that I'm going to be using today. I also have my Stellaire. I'm going to be using the embroidery side of that. If you don't have an embroidery machine from Brother, or you have an older machine, or you have the Luminaire, or the Dream Machine, it's okay. Because I'm going to be using a fill. If you don't have embroidery, don't worry. I've got you covered there too. So we're going to be quilting in the embroidery side. And we're also going to be quilting on the sewing side. So I will be using the Stellaire, the Luminaire, but these will most of this will be translatable to your machine. But even if you just have a simple sewing machine from Brother, we got you covered there too. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. I cannot wait to see what you put together. Let's get rolling. So before we get started, do me a favor. And if you're on Brother's YouTube page, subscribe. If you're on Brother's Facebook page, be sure to follow. You won't miss any of the updates when they show up. And also in the comments, tell them how excited you are for this grocery bag so long. All right, so I'm going to take you over to the table. And I am live, so I can see all of your comments. Lots of techniques. That is definitely... Oh, Helen's going to get the print moda. You're going to have fun with that one. <laughs> this is going to be a great project. So while I'm taking all your comments down, by the way, I have to tell you, I finished the bag. It's so cute. We used it all weekend. And now I need a second one. And now my mom and sisters say they want one. I haven't shown it to my brothers yet. I'm sure they're going to want one too. So <laughs> you better get ready to do some sewing. All right, let me just take this down and we'll get going. It is going to be fun. Yay, yay. All right, so let's get to the table and I'll show you the supplies that you need. Here you go. Okay, you probably would like a close-up look at this because I've been teasing it for a few days, but you haven't seen everything. So let me show you what the bag entails. You can see it's a nice thick quilting. So there's quilting along the front and the back side. And then there's quilting on the side panels if you look really close. Let me make you just a little bit brighter. I think you'll see it just a little bit better. Is that better? Yeah, perfect. Okay. I have straps, custom made straps that match both sides of the bag. I also have a pocket. 
because when I'm running somewhere, I usually have my keys, my lip gloss. I could put a zipper here if I wanted to, if I wanted it secure, but this will also fit my phone, which is perfect. So if I'm grocery shopping or I'm running quick errands, it's an easy way to keep everything intact. And of course, I email. I emailed, uh, I could email, I embroidered the name of our fishing boat, decorated the pocket a little bit. That's in a whole separate lesson. And then we have a nice zipper at the top that opens all the way up. And on the inside, you can see all the other side of the quilting. This is gonna be a super fun project. So there's two ways you could make this bag. I actually made this bag where it'll keep things warm. It'll actually also keep them cold, but there's also another fabric that you could use. You've probably seen it, it's a shiny silver that you could put on the inside if you want it to be more of a cooler bag. So either way is fine, I will explain both ways, but this one is going to be with the batting on the inside that keeps your things warm. I know it says warm, but actually it kept all of my stuff cold for the whole three hour drive. So there's the bag. And I would love to know uh, if you could just leave a quick comment I'm using fishing fabric. <laughs> I want to know what your fabric's going to look like. Tell me your colors, if you're going to use a print, what it's going to look like. And actually, if you're on Instagram, be sure to share a photo of the fabric you're going to use and use hashtag Brother Sews and hashtag Angela Wolf so we can see the before and then compare it to your later one. All right, so supplies. I've got a whole batch of them here. Give you a little preview and I will list these for you. So go grab a pen. And also don't worry, I will put this in the blog post. It was in an email this morning. If you missed the email, just contact me and I'll send it to you. Okay, are you ready? So these are the supplies for the challenge. It's not really a challenge. We could call it a challenge because I'm challenging you to make this during the whole month. <laughs> so that is your challenge. All right, so here's what you need. You got a pencil and a pen? Are you ready? Cotton fabric, just plain old cotton fabric. It's easier to quilt that way too. So you need one and a half. Now I made this very broad. Technically you probably could use less, but to be safe, a yard and a half of cotton fabric. I chose a print for the outside. So that's a yard and a half of a printed fabric and a yard and a half of whatever you want for the lining, which I also used cotton. So. I have print on the outside, solid on the inside. You can do anything you want to, but a yard and a half of each. You also want to wash it and dry it. Why? Because I've already had fried chicken in my bag. I don't know what the guys were thinking. I think I told them I'd keep it warm. <laughs> and yes, they threw the fried chicken in there. So I've already washed it once to get all the chicken grease out of it. So you want to wash and dry that fabric. Other supplies you're going to need, a yard and a half of insulated lining. And I'll show you what I have there and take your questions. Now, it's not a brother product, but on my blog tomorrow, uh, you'll see what I used. I'll leave a link to it, okay? And then also, if you decide to have yours more of a cooler bag, there's a fabric that you can purchase for that as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you could use plastic for the inside too, but I would not quilt plastic. The plastic, though, would clean that fried chicken a little faster. <laughs> That's for sure. I know, Zena. What do you do? What do you do? <laughs> the fried chicken did stay warm, though. All right. We also have a 22-inch closed zipper. I say closed because the zipper is much longer than the bag, which I'll show you. But the reason being is because then you can open your whole bag. So you're probably thinking, that bag wasn't 22 inches. I know. But you need a 22-inch zipper. It could be longer if you want, but don't go shorter. And closed end, meaning when you open it, it doesn't come all the way open. This isn't a jacket, guys, it's a bag, okay? All right, you've got a one package of quarter inch or half inch bias tape. That's optional, because you could also use self fabric. So I'll show you where I use that and then you can do your determination on that. Also, as we get rolling on this, I'm not giving you all the details of what to cut immediately. It will show up in each of the lessons because I wanna show you what I did in case you wanna change yours up a little bit. If I tell you, cut four strips of 12 inch by two inch straps, you're gonna think, well, what color? I'll show you different options. So don't stress about anything until we do each one. So today we'll do the outside bag, but this is what you need. And you're also gonna need sticky back tearaway or cutaway embroidery stabilizer if you're going to embroider. 
if you're going to embroider, you also need fusible interfacing. Not a very big piece, eight by 16, will pretty much cover that pocket. Uh, but so basically, let's see, it comes 16 inches wide usually. So I would get 16 inches of interfacing if you have the 22 inch wide. If you have 60 inch wide, then you just need eight inches. Okay, got that. Oh, what else do we have? Sewing thread, embroidery thread. And I'm using for my sewing a number 14 denim G needle. So you're going through a lot of layers here and you need that little extra oomph. I think that's it. Did I miss anything? One and a half yards of cotton fabric with a print, one and a half with lining. I've got a yard and a half of insulated lining, which I'll show you. Have you ever used that stuff? You've probably seen us on the show before where uh, other brother educators or brand ambassadors made casserole dishes, stuff like that that keeps things hot. Well, it actually keeps things cold too. <laughs> Trust me, I tested it. All right, what else? Oh, somebody's using bee fabric. That sounds fun, Lisa. Oh, Hawaii style. I like that, Linda. Anything else? Oh, a terracotta, Esther. That's going to be gorgeous. And I see Cindy up here. I'm, list I'm reading all of your fabric choices. Bold colors. I love that. I know, Bev. You knew I'd be using fishing. Although I'm going to have to change it up a little bit for my mom. Oh, bee fabric with sunflowers. That sounds great. Actually, there's some pretty cool bee and sunflower embroidery inside that luminaire. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Kids cotton. All right, so let's go back to the table and let's get started for today. Well, we got boho for a summer bag. All right, uh, Tony, I did not give you the dimensions for the handles yet. Today, we're going to start with the outside of the bag. So we're not doing anything with the handles and I'll give you those dimensions when we work on this in the next lesson because I don't want you to cut something and realize, hey, you know what? I like the other colors better. So we'll put those to the side. There's fabric for my pocket. You can have a pocket on both sides or one side. It's totally up to you. So I'm putting that to the side. And this is what we're working on today. So I will give you these dimensions. Now, one thing that I like to do is I will cut my fabric bigger than what I need, okay? So for this project, these are the side panels and I'm going to quilt them. So I have cut these and I'll show you right here. These are for the side panels. So you'll need two pieces of the colored fabric or printed and two pieces of the solid color or whatever you're using for lining and two pieces of the batting that goes on the inside. Again, it's not a brother product, but that you can find this at a lot of sewing stores and craft stores. It keeps your items hot, or you can kind of barely see that little piece of silver in there. It also keeps it cold. So that's what I'm using. So you need two, two, and two. And I cut these 14 by 20. 14 inches wide by 20 inches long. That's not going to be our final measurement, but that's the measurement you need to get started as far as the quilting embellishing. Okay, so that's two, two, and two. 14 by 20. Any questions on that part? So this is gonna be the side panel. And to give you some different ideas for embellishing, I'm going to use the embroidery hoop for this. We're going to embroider a fill onto this. If you don't have an embroidery machine, don't worry. What we do to the other side, you can do to these panels as well. You would still cut them the same dimensions. And again, this is not the final dimension for the bag. This is the dimensions to get started to embellish. All right, the next batch of fabrics here. I've got two lining. Again, two decorative fabric for the outside and two of the insulated batting. So two, two, and two. 
This is going to be the front and the back part of the bag, which we're going to do quilting on the machine, not on the embroidery machine. And this is where if you don't have an embroidery machine or you want to do some decorative stitches, this is where I'll give you ideas for that. So on this piece, I cut these about 17 inches wide. I cut the batting a little bit bigger. It doesn't matter. We're going to be trimming this. And I always like to cut these bigger because once you do the quilting, sometimes it can get a little smaller. So about 17 inches by 20, 22 inches. 17 by about 22. You got it? All right. So we got 17 by 22 for the larger piece, which we're going to quilt by a machine, by the machine. And this is going to be embroidered. And again, two of each piece on this one too. And this is about 14 by 20. Okay. I have this written down, but I thought I better write down because somebody's going to join here at the end and say, wait, what were those dimensions? So this is all you need for today. Everything else will be left later on. And to give you a quick look at the bag again, those larger pieces are this entire front section. It's sewn together here and goes all the way around to the front. The side panels that are a little shorter, you can see here, and I actually embroidered them with a fill. Do you notice what that fill is? Of course, it's fishing. Now, where I used the bias tape was here, and I used some decoration in the front. Those are all optional. And when we get to that section, uh, you can decide what you want to use. But all the supplies I gave you is everything I used on this bag. Okay? All right. So the first thing I want to get started, and be sure to drop your questions in here. I'll help you any way I can. But why don't we get started on the embroidery side? That way I can leave this in the machine while, we're, while I'm taking your questions. So I will be using the new Stellaire, but anybody that has a brother machine with a fill, you're going to, you can use it. It's fine. If you don't have an embroidery machine, just enjoy this part because you'll be following along with the next section. So take one piece of fabric. There we go. And one piece of lining. and one piece of batting. I know, I just threw it on the floor. <laughs> uh, I'm not using embroidery stabilizer for this part. I don't want it to be stiff. So the first thing you'll do is take your hoop. I'm using the largest hoop. Make sure I've got the right one here. Yeah, nine and a half by 14. Now, when you go to cut your batting, you can see I cut mine just a little bit short. If you want, ideally you want this to be a little bit longer to fit into your hoop. It embroidered with no problem, but if you want that, then go ahead and add two inches to your length. So you would cut your fabric 17 inches wide by 24 inches long. But you don't have to. All right, so I have my lining on the bottom, my batting in the middle, and my fabric on top. There's really, you know, I was trying to find the right side to this fabric, but one fish goes this way. They're all kind of, I guess this is the top and this is the bottom. We'll just leave it at that. Make sure you open your hoop up to make sure there's enough room because you've got all that batting. Slide this in place. Push down. I just want to make sure I get my fabric over just a little bit more here. I'm trying to keep this straight. When you're leaning over a camera, it doesn't always work out that way, right? There we go. Almost. I got to turn it this way, guys, so I can hoop in a normal fashion. So, by the way, your knob on your hoop matches that knob there, in case you didn't know that. Just 
make sure this is plenty tight in here. That looks pretty good. Just making sure that it all, all the fabric is in here. I guess I cut mine a little bit short for this hoop, but it will work. Look good. Double check the back side. Looks nice. So we're going to embroider in here a fill. Literally, I can put the fill on here, walk away, and let it embroider. So let's go to the machine and get this started. And then I'll come and take your questions, and we'll also talk about uh, other things you can do. All right. Go into this Delaire. First thing is you need to pick what color fabric, not fabric, pick a thread that matches your fabric. So I just have regular sewing thread. I thought that would look a little bit nicer on the quilting side instead of embroidery thread. And I've already wound my bobbin with the same because you're going to see this. You're gonna see both sides, whoops, both sides from the quilting. All right, get my arm out of your way. And go ahead and thread the machine. You could use embroidery thread if you wanted to, that would be fine. It's totally up to you, but I like the look of the sewing thread. All right, let's get this started. I love the automatic needle threaders. All right, now you have a few different options on your machine how you wanna add these fills, okay? I'm gonna use my design center, but you could just use the embroidery side too. On my design center, uh, in here, let's go ahead and tell it what size hoop we're gonna use. Nine and a half by 14, for those of you that asked what, for, what hoop are you using? And now let's go ahead and add a fill. I, you can barely see that red line around there. Click here. Let's see what fill should we pick? Well, you can pick anything you want to. And even, you know, if you have the dream machine that had fills on it. So go through your machine and see what they have and see what would look nice. Uh, that would complement your fabric. Now, you could also, by the way, use a solid fabric and add one of these fills. It would be beautiful. All these options. Hmm. You know what would be really cool? That would be a really cute bag. Actually, so would that on a solid color. Ooh, we might have to do something with that one, but I'm going to use fish so my bag matches my other one. I will go ahead and just make this pink so you can see it, although I'm going to be using blue. Well, I'll just make it blue. You'll be able to see blue, I think. Click OK. Click on the bucket. And there is my fill. I know. Isn't that fun? I don't think I want it that close together, though. So in the next screen, you can do that. So click Next. If you have the luminaire, you can do this on that as well. And even if you end up using a larger hoop, if you're using the luminaire and then you decide to, well, I wouldn't use a smaller hoop. Let's go with that. That's where I was kind of going with that. All right, size. Let's make it bigger. Let's see what 195% looks like. Preview. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? If you don't like it, you can return. But once you get to the embroidery side, you can't go back. So what I usually like to do is I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller. Let's go 175%. Click set. You can save it now if you want to. 
and now is when I usually try to save it just to make sure it's in my machine because if I get sidetracked and go do something else, at least I'll have this. It says it's 19 minutes. Quick set. And there's my embroidery. Pretty cool, right? All right, there's really nothing in here I need to do because it's filling up the whole hoop. Now let's go grab our hoop and put it on the machine. And again, if you don't have an embroidery machine, no worries, because the next section we're going to embellish with quilting, and I'm sure your machine has sewing. At least I hope so. All right, hold tight. I'm just going to re-hoop my fabric real quick. I noticed that one of the sides wasn't quite covered, so while I'm doing that, I would love to know, are you going to do a fill or are you just going to quilt? I know. Yeah, you can't see me. You're just going to have to, like, listen to me. <laughs> I'm just moving this fabric around, making sure that my fabric is in the hoop, or that could be a problem. All right. That's better. Just needed to make that just a little bit tighter. If something's going to go wrong, it would only go wrong during a live show, right? Okay, slide this in place and push that down. In case you've never embroidered before, you want to push this down right here. On the embroidery side, just click embroidery. You also have other options here, by the way, when you're working on different things. We really don't have, can't use the laser light because it's filling up the whole frame, right? So that really wouldn't make any sense. This here is a basting stitch, which will hold your fabric in place. So let's go ahead and just put the foot down and click go. I like to do a few, just a few stitches first to see, make sure everything looks right. I like doing this basting stitch, especially when I have a huge hoop when I'm doing this fill, because it'll make sure that all my fabric stays together. Not that it's going to fall out, but that's just my own personal preference. All right, so what questions do you have for me? I know, I love excuses to use fills as well. <laughs> okay, I'm, we're watching it just to make sure. If you have the app on your phone, by the way, it will actually uh, tell you if you run out of thread. Do you have that app on your phone? Okay, hold on, let me just bring this up. Let's go ahead and click go again. I wanna just make sure that basting stitch look nice. That's perfect. And then we'll actually be cutting almost exactly on that line, which makes it a little convenient. Just a little. All right. Hey, Doris. Yes, you could use wash away for the basting stitch, but we're actually going to be cutting almost exactly on that stitch line when we're finished. That's why I cut my fabric bigger to make sure it'll fit in the hoop. Now, for those of you that maybe don't have fills, maybe you have one of the brother machines that has a four by four hoop or something like that. Maybe you still wanna quilt that whole piece. Well, what we're embroidering now are the side panels, the side panels for the bag. And that means for the rest of the bag, I'm gonna just do quilting. So in this part, for those of you that don't have embroidery, I want you to take a look at all your decorative stitches. Is there something cool you could use on that? That takes a little while though, so I'm just gonna do something super easy and very basic, and it's quilting. So before I go over there, any questions for me? Is the basting stitch one you add to the fill in the design center? No, I added it at the end there, Angie. I don't know if you saw me click that button at the end. It was under that little section. Oh, there you go, Judy. You've had your stellaire for a year. Oh, you will love, and you live in Niles? You're right down the street from me. 
Hey, Judy, you might. Uh, by the way, I'll be showing a lot with the Stellaire this month. But also check with your dealer because you might want the Stellaire Masterclass, which there's a ton of episodes in there teaching you how to use My Design Center. All right, anything else? Well, we need extra fabric to use self-fabric bias tape. Nope, all the, everything I gave you, Teresa, is all the fabric you need. The one package of half inch or quarter inch bias tape is for uh, the little trims that I did, and it's optional. So if you can't find the right color. What do you got for it? Oh, you stepped away. Yeah, so no, it's not in my design center. The fill was there, which you could also use it just on the embroidery side too. But I wanted to use my design center because I know a lot of you don't use that. And also, I can adjust the size a little bit more. Uh, what do you got for me, Marilyn? Did you slow the machine down because you're not using embroidery thread? No, I did not. I've never had a problem with that. But we are live. <laughs> Oh, Julie, uh, you can also email me too, or get in touch with me. If you got my newsletter today, just reply to that, or uh, you can message me on Facebook too, and I can help you with that. Uh, Brittany, I'm just using standard sewing thread. You could use embroidery thread if you want to, but just standard. Any other questions? Okay, well, while this is working, Let's go quilt the other part. So we're multitasking today. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Let's go on over here. And let's go back to the table. So this is one of my favorite things to do. I'm gonna be using the digital, the move it foot. Digital dual move it foot. If you don't have that, You'll just want to use just a regular standard J foot. We're going to be doing some quilting. So again, I'm going to take one piece of lining and one piece of the solid color and one piece of the insulated. The hot, how do it know it's hot and cold? That's always my big joke with when. How do it know? It's like the thermos joke, right? Okay, so I wanna line up my lining as close to my fabric as I possibly can. So I cut my, looks like I cut my insulation just a little bit bigger, which is really no, not a problem. So I'm gonna kinda line everything up on this edge here and I'll do the same thing with my fabric. As you can see, it doesn't matter if your insulation is just a little bit bigger. You just don't want a little smaller because once we're done quilting, we're going to be cutting this down anyways. So it looks like I've got my fabric pretty close. Is it matching? Yeah. What about the sides? Yep, yep, yep. And yep. Okay. Now you're going to need a ruler. You can use a quilter's ruler. Uh, whatever you want. This is a little bit longer, so I'm going to use this right here. And I really want to do a line from one end to the other. For those of you that know, have followed me for a long time, and you've watched me do some quilting, you can come up with some pretty cool designs. So I'm going to give myself a line here. Now I know if you watched a couple of the last few lessons on Brother Sews. The Stellaire has the, the Sew Straight Laser Light, but you have to give it a guide first. So there's one of my lines. If you're going to use the Luminaire, that's probably all you need because you could use the grid and make this further apart. All right, so I'm making my lines two inches apart. And this is just uh, Taylor's chalk that brushes off. I'm not using the kind that presses off because you just never know when you press it. Sometimes it likes to stay on your fabric. All right. Actually, this is two. These are two and a half inches wide. I misspoke. These lines are two and a half inches wide. But do yours any way you want to. Like maybe you want yours one inch wide. Maybe you want to have two close together and then a few far apart. Anything you want. This is your designing part. 
So I mentioned decorative stitches as well. So I'm just gonna be using a straight stitch to do all this quilting, but you could use a decorative stitch. I'll show you the bottom of my bag. I actually started with one of the decorative, sti decorative stitches first, and then I realized that I would still be working on that bag right now. So uh, you could just give me the LOL emoji on that. I caved and decided, no, I can't do that. I would still be working on the bag and there wouldn't be a sew along. Now I'm just waiting for my machine to beep because I use that same thread to do the embroidery on the last piece and I'm sure that the bobbin's gonna run out anytime. All right, can you see all those lines? I'll bring you really close here. Got them? All right, now that you have one set of lines, I'm gonna go ahead and just draw my other lines and get it over with. So I'm going from one corner to the other. Oh, bring you back out here. I'm going from this corner to this corner. No, this is not a quilter's ruler. This is actually my rotary cutting rulers. But they come in handy, especially when you're trying to just get something a certain width. Okay, so I'm curious, are you going to be doing quilting with a straight stitch? Are you going to be doing quilting with decorative stitches? And you're gonna be sewing through all three of these layers. So this is where I'll be using the denim jean needle for the sewing side. You don't necessarily have to for the quilting. It's really when I get into the sewing, when I'm going through this layer and another whole batch of layers. So you're basically going through, what, four layers of fabric. When you get to the binding, you'll be going through six layers of fabric and two batting. So you're gonna challenge your sewing machine. And as long as you're using the right tools, You'll be fine. Okay. Now, regardless if you have the sew straight laser light or not, again, if you had the if you have the luminaire, you could use the grid. You'd only need one line going each direction. And if you're using the stellaire, you can use your sew straight laser light to follow any of these. I know, isn't this fun? Or if you don't have any of those and you're just using a brother sewing machine, then all you have to do is just use a straight stitch and follow each of these lines. So there's my entire piece. You can see all of the diagonals on here. Again, I cannot wait to see photos of what you end up doing with this fabric. All right, let's check in on our embroidery. How's it looking? Hey, it's looking pretty good. What do you think? Good so far? <laughs> Are you gonna be quilting this? That's what my big question is. I see somebody saying something about sewing straight lines. I know if you have that laser light, boy, that thing does come in hand handy. Uh, Doris, does the insulation double as batting? Yes, this stuff does. So uh, if, if you're looking for the same thing, I'll put it on my blog post tomorrow because it's not a brother product but it does double as a batting because you wouldn't want to add batting on top of this. Oh, thanks, Julie. Quilting for sure. Quilting, quilting. Well, what I'm doing next can be done on any of your machines. So this is the fills and that we're doing on this embroidery machine now, which can be done in my design center or in some of the machines can be done straight from the embroidery screen. <laughs> yes, it can. Okay, so I have an idea for some of you. Uh, I need to multi-hoop. So here's an idea for you on this. If you need to multi-hoop, say that you only have, say, a five by seven hoop and you want to do little sections. If you have any problems lining it up, you have a few tools of the trade that can help you depending on what machine you have. But one idea for you, and I'll grab it while we go over here, uh, for the quilting side, since I'm right there. 
So if you decide that you need to multi-hoop or, um, or you just want to, another idea is as you're hooping for each section, if you've never done that before, it can be a little nerve wracking. What you could do is chalk in some guidelines for yourself and embroider each section and then that extra bias tape that I told you about or a contrasting, you could use the contrasting fabric. You can give yourself some stripes that could technically be connectors in between if your embroidery wasn't exactly the way you wanted it or if you're nervous and you say, well, I'm going to do one hooping here and one hooping here and you've got a little extra space. You could use the bias tape or contrasting fabric and we could attach it and make little boxes. So. Even if you have a smaller embroidery hoop you've never embroidered ever, don't be afraid to try this. All right, well, let's go to the machine. And it stopped because the bobbin thread's out and it's just about finished. Okay, so look, like two minutes left and the bobbin's out. So we're gonna leave that for now. I knew that was gonna happen. Let's go to the sewing machine. So I already have everything here ready for you. And I wasn't sure who was a super newbie at using your machine. So this is the move it foot, the thinner, I call it the skinny mini, plugs into the back of your machine. It's very easy to install unless you're leaning over a camera. So let me just show you what you do. Unscrew this here. You don't have to use this, but if you have it on your machine, you should try it. It is so simple. So I'm just taking my J foot off. Slide this into place. To unscrew it a little bit further. This is where I'm always like leaning over the machine, hoping that I get this right. <laughs> Wrong angle. All right, slide it in. All right, make sure it's not wiggly and tighten it. You always want to tighten this because it could fall off if you don't. There you go. And then you'll plug this section here into the back of the machine. That is your move it foot. It's been around for a long time, regardless if you have the new skinny one or the other one that was a little bit thicker. So you can see here, and then I plugged it in up here to the back of the machine. All right, now on this time, I'm using the Luminaire, and you could be using the Still Air, you could be using any machine, but I know somebody's gonna ask, what are you using? Now you know. <laughs> All right, click on the screen to open it up, click Sewing. It shows me that my differential, that, do you see this? My dual foot, digital dual foot, not differential, is it says DF, that's what I'm using. And if you look closely for my machine, it grays out anything that I can't use. So let's just say I decided, hey, you know what? I wanna use a decorative stitch. Click on it. If it shows up over here, that means you can use it. Scroll down. This one here, you can't use. So pretty easy to figure it out. So if you decide to use one of these other stitches here, just make sure that it's not grayed out or uh, in other words, if you click on it and it won't let you, it'll tell you that you can't use it, even if your machine doesn't gray those out. I'm just gonna use a straight stitch and I could use the triple stitch, which looks really nice. Uh, this was a stitch that Joanne used yesterday, which is beautiful. A lot of these are really pretty. I'm just gonna use a straight stitch for now. And I am gonna change the length. I'm gonna change it to a three. 0 0.0, uh, even a 3.5 looks nice. Why don't we go 3.5? And then for this machine, I want to turn on my laser. Click here. And for my main laser, uh, once I get my fabric on the, under there, I'll be able to see it and I can line it up for my so straight laser light, which I can just barely see it right there. I'll show you on the still air where that's located as well. All right, let me bring you back over here and I'll get my fabric for you. 
So again, this time I'm using just regular sewing thread. I chose a little darker color for this one. It's like a darker blue. Uh, why? <laughs> well, because I didn't have the same color for both, but also because on here for the fish on the side, I wanted those to stand out. And I was afraid that if I used the same color dark blue, you're not going to really see those fish, which you don't have to, but I kind of think that was cool. And they're kind of a side accent in the bag. So the main thing you see is the part we're doing now. So if you'd rather have those fish on the big part, have at it <laughs> or whatever design you're using. All right, before I start sewing, any questions for me? Oh, that would be beautiful. I don't know if the shishiko stitch, I don't think that will work with um, the move it foot. I don't think it does, but the shishiko stitch might take a long time and going through all those layers. So I think I would maybe go with one of the stitches I pointed out. Hey, Dalia. But shishiko would be very cool. Yes, granted. But also, the other thing is you want it to look nice on both sides of the stitch. <laughs> oh, the free motion quilting kit. Free motion on here would be a lot of fun, by the way. Yeah. See, I give you guys a few ideas, and then you just take it to the next level. <laughs> uh, no, Chandris, the Move It Foot is, let's see, it's on the Stellaire. The Dream Machine, uh, the Luminaire. I don't think it went with the Dreamweaver all the way back, but don't quote me on that. But I do know those three machines. Yep, the Dream Machine's a little different than the Walking Foot. Actually, a lot different. All right, let's go back over here. I'll bring my fabric over. And before we do that, I just want to show you the bag where I started to do a decorative stitch to give you an idea. And it's on the bottom of the bag. And I changed my mind <laughs> because it was taking a long time. But see the blanket stitch there? Can you see that? Just like a little itsy bit. I'll hold it for a second. You see it? That looked really cool. That was for my straps. But I thought of doing that for my quilting as well. And then I decided it's going to take too long. So again, here's the side panel, how it finishes with the fish. I used a lighter color on the inside of the bag. You can see the fish. And then for the part we're doing now, you can see on the inside of the bag and on the outside of the bag, if you look closely, you can just barely see those quilting lines. You can actually see it a lot better from the inside. So you have all weekend to work on this, by the way. Our next live is not till we have May on Tuesday. Our next for the so long is until Thursday. So you actually have a whole week to do this. So keep this together, making sure it doesn't fall apart. Take it to the machine. The sewing machine. And when I'm all finished here, I'll show you on the Stellaire where to find that laser light. So just out of curiosity, what brother machine are you using? Oh, you do have it on that one. Thanks, Joanna. Yeah, Eileen, there is extra, there are extra feet for the Move It Foot. There's a quilting one. Uh, there's, oh, I can't even think of the names right now because I wasn't even thinking of that, but there are. And if you use that foot a lot, it's worth, it's worth it. And depending on what machine you have, like if you have the Luminaire, there's even room in the box to put them. So there are, you might want to visit your brother dealer and see what they have and sew with them to see if you really like it. Oh, we got a couple. Hey, Sandra. Great to see you. Uh, Linda, would what make it too stiff? The decorative stitches? The quilting doesn't make it too stiff. Um... Yeah, Marina, you could do this project with the fill and quilting portions on the 10 needle. Absolutely. Yes, and, but you're going to still need a sewing machine to put it together. <laughs> I know, I knew you'd want to make it quilted. It's so much fun. For those of you that mentioned free motion, though, oh, yeah, free motion would be beautiful on this. You would just have to be careful. Maybe that's what Linda was talking about. 
Uh, if you're doing free motion on here, don't put things, don't stitch too closely together because it could make it a little stiff. So yes, if that's what she was talking about. Oh, hey, Susie, she's got the, the luminaire. Oh, Marilyn's got a couple. Uh, Teresa, uh, we'll have brother, ask your brother dealer. I don't know off the top of my head. You would think I would, but I don't know. <laughs> All right, we've got the pace setter, the still air. Yes, by next Thursday, you should have both sides done and both front and back, and then we'll cut them down to their actual size. And next week, we're doing the pocket. So you'll need your fabric washed by then. In next week's lesson, I'll fill you in more later. But let's go ahead and get this started with the sewing. Oh, decorative stitches will look good on the bag, the bag handles. Angie, that's where I started doing the blanket stitch. And I was like, ooh, this might take a while. I might do it on this one, though, because I have a little more time. All right, back to the machine. Keep your questions rolling in. Keep your comments rolling in. And be sure to give me the love on the heart side if you're loving this. Click the like button. And then if you do, we'll remember that you like these sew-alongs and we might add a few more coming up. You never know. Brother always likes to know what you want to see. Okay, so I'm gonna start. You can just barely, if you look closely. Whoa, <laughs> how do you like that? Did you have your coffee yet? Because if you didn't, I just really made you think that you did. There's the laser light, you see it on my finger. So I want to line up the laser light where my needle is. Oh, ironically, it's already lined up that way. Probably because I use this for my the rest of my bag. So I, you can turn the colors on your laser light to whatever color looks best. So that's red. I can barely see that. I'll put my finger here. How about I'll put the white. See that a little better? There's white. And there's green. So see how that shows up on the white. Now when I have it on the blue, I think almost the green shows up better. There's the white. Oh, white's not bad. And the red, I can't see at all. I'll go with the green. And it is lined up with my needle. So let's start. I like to start at one of the corners. I don't start right at the edge of the fabric because we're gonna be cutting some of this away anyways. So I'll start just inside of this fabric and I'll start in the middle and then work out and then work out this way. All right. I think I'm also going to put I did not program my foot pedal, but I might do that depending on I can't remember where I left it. I'm not back stitching at the beginning because we're going to be cutting most of that off anyways. And it will be in a it'll be in a seam, so it really doesn't matter. So if you feel your fabric shifting at all, what you'll want to do on your move it foot, just give you a quick lesson real quick here for those of you that have never used this. Here you go. Uh, in here, by the way, this is where I clicked the white and the red. And this was all under this heading here, and this was under the main section. All right, so I'm gonna close that. It still leaves the light on, but I've closed that for now. So under your settings here, uh, you've got your presser, foot pressure, things like that. By the way, so this is in the Luminaire Masterclass and also in the Still Air Masterclass where I walk you through how to set a lot of these things. So in the dual feed, feed adjustment, I have it on plus one right now and it's kind of shifting a little bit, but here's all of your settings. So I'm gonna put this back on zero, and I must have been working on something in between here. You also have all these settings in the negative side and the plus, and this controls the belt on the foot, not your feed dogs, okay? So go back and try it. If you need to test it on a sample, go ahead and do that. But I wanted to show you that in case you start using it, and you're like, wait a minute, I thought you said this foot was great, and my fabric shifting. Okay. I'm going to turn my 
laser light back on because I went into that screen it turned off. There we go. I know you get used to using it. And you're like, wait, where did it go? So I'm curious, all of you that do a lot of quilting, when the laser light first came out, I remember thinking, what is the big deal? I sew all the time, every day. I could probably sew straight in my sleep because I designed clothes. So of course I'm doing a ton of top stitching. Well, once I started using it, I realized that I can sit back further. Cause look at how far this laser lights all the way out to here. So instead of staring at the needle, I'm not even looking at the needle. I'm looking way out here to see that the line is straight. This is probably my favorite part of the whole project. <laughs> Oh, I said it where it backstitched at the beginning. I just said it on there. So I didn't do that on purpose. I, it's not gonna hurt anything. Here we go, all the way to the end. And if you have just a sewing machine, not just, but let's just say, hey, you know what? I just have a regular sewing machine. Doesn't have all these bells and whistles. No problem. Chalk yourself in some lines and sew some beautiful quilting. I'm sure you can probably think of a few bag few bags. I won't mention brands since it's not a brother brand, <laughs> but I'm sure you can think of a few bags that are quilted that are very, very, very expensive. So this is your grocery bag is going to look, <laughs> people are going to say, where did you get that? You don't have to use it for groceries. You could use it for other things too. I'd, like I said, the guys on the boat sure enjoyed it. Maybe just put a disclaimer on yours. Keep the fried chicken out. <laughs> oh, so I saw somebody asking. Yes. So I'm using, and I'll put it on the blog post in the morning. You'll find that at AngelaWolf.com. Everything else is on Brothers' social pages. But I'll, I'll post this in the morning for you. And I will also post a link to next week's lesson. So you can't miss a thing. Uh, but also, this insulation, which it says it's for heat, I put a couple cold drinks in there. I had some chip dip, things like that. And guess what? It kept them cold. And I can probably tell you for sure it kept them cold because it was very hot last weekend. Hot, humid, sticky. All right. I'm going to turn off that automatic back stitch on there. I don't need that. Not for this part. Get a good view of my arm there. I know it's always like a hard uh, fix here. Where do you stand to make sure that I you can see over the camera? So this project right here, uh, are any of you sewing with me on my sew along that we started a couple weeks ago on my page, which is a quilted, a couture style quilted skirt out of a boucle or a tweed? This would be a very good complement to it, by the way. Maybe not out of a boucle or tweed, but lots of quilting going on for National Sewing Month. All right, we're just about finished with this side. I'll do just a little bit on the next side, but I think you're getting the idea. If you have any last minute questions, drop them in now. I'll be right over there to answer them for you. All right, we have one side done. Let's go ahead and do a couple rows for this one here. One more thing, when you're going through all these layers, if you have any problems uh, with the fabric shifting, again, go check out how, what your move it foot settings are on. If you're not using a move it foot, you could use a walking foot, you could use a standard J foot. But if you still are having issues or say you're, you're really having a difficult time sewing straight lines, just go at a slower speed.
I'm not using any pins. I just layered the fabrics. They're both bigger than what the bag is going to be, and I'll be trimming it. So if anything shifted at all, you can see I'm not even sewing all the way to the end. It doesn't matter. That's why I gave you a bigger piece to cut out with. I like to start uh, with less error for everyone, right? Including myself. Even when I quilt my garments, a lot of times I'll cut them just a little bit bigger, or I for sure cut the lining a little bigger. All right, let me just give you a close look here what we got for our hour is up. So you can see all the quilting here. You can probably see it really good from this side. Look at that. Doesn't that look great? So, oh, you can actually see the laser light a little better on this side too. I could have sewn on this side. You would have seen everything. Well, but I thought you might want to look at the fish. So there's all the quilting for this piece. So you need to do both of those panels. That's going to be your front and back panel. And then you need to embroider or embellish both of your side panels. And again, if you don't have embroidery, just do this quilting that I'm doing here on both of those sides. You know what I would probably do though? I would probably think of, if you're not gonna do embroidery, let's go back to the table for a second. Look at the inside of this bag. All right, here you go. I'm flipping it inside out. The inside of this bag looks as good as the outside, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> so there's the fishing on the inside. There's the larger quilting. There's the fishing. So if you're going to do quilting and no embroidery on the sides, maybe do the side panels with closer embroidery or having these go straight up and down or come up with a different design for the side panels. I'm challenging you to think outside the box a little bit. And then here's the big panels. Obviously, this is your straps. By the way, this is what the inside bottom looks like. The inside of the bag, you could wear, you could have inside out. It would look just as good. Your zipper might just not work. <laughs> not as easy, right? All right, what questions do you have for me? I'll grab those real quick before the end here. Oh, I agree, decorative stitches will look great. Oh, you guys have a lot of good machines. Uh, Eileen, I have the Luminaire 3, and what are the sizes of the pieces you just did? Both. So, Eileen, you'll have to go back to the beginning. I wrote them down, though, so hold on tight. Let me bring them up here. You're going to want to go back and watch this from the beginning for your entire supply list as well. You need an, a yard and a half of each color fabric. You need a yard and a half of the lining. That's the main thing. A 22-inch closed-end zipper. One package, is, one package of half inch or quarter inch bias tape, that's optional for decoration. Uh, some embroidery stabilizer, fusible interfacing, which we'll get into in the next lesson. I like to show you things as we go, so that way if you have questions, I can answer them for you. So we cut two panels, 14 by 20, two panels, the two side panels, which would include two lining, two fabric, and two of the batting. 14 by 20 and two pieces for the both fronts, 17 by 22. So 14 by 20, 17 by 22. And on both of those, you're cutting two, two, and two. Two linings, two fabric, and two facings. And I will put this on a blog post tomorrow at AngelaWolf.com. And if you're on Instagram, Brother has this on their Instagram page. So let me just bring this up real quick for you. I've got the website here. Here you go. So first of all, if you're joining this and you're on Instagram or Facebook, be sure to use hashtag Brother Sews, okay? Because they're going to love to see this. And also, uh, you can use hashtag Angela Wolf. There's no E at the end of that. It's Wolf like the animal because I really want to see what you're working on. And plus, you inspire me. Hey, Vicki. You guys have a lot of good machines here. <laughs> Any last minute questions before I tell you what you need to do before next week? I think you got it. I don't see any new ones. Thank you, thank you. 
So, Marsha, I just announced them, and they're going on the blog tomorrow morning. And also, Marsha, in the newsletter I sent this morning, all the supplies were in there, but the measurements for the side panels that you're that you're quilting. This is not your finished side panels. 14 by 20 and 17 by 22. Oh, Chandra's, uh, Sandrika wants uh, more sew alongs. I love it. <laughs> well, they're fun, aren't they? We got the luminaire. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Any last minute questions? I'm scrolling. Well, you guys were really on the roll today. And I love it that you're all visiting with each other too. Hey, Doris, would you recommend doing decorative stitching on the straps using the border hoop? Ooh. Um, well, you could, but it would be a little bit challenging because of the way that I sew them on. So you'll have to stay tuned for that. Oh, wonderful to hear, Sandra. And welcome to the brother family. Any others? What stitch length are you using here? It was a 3.5, Sandra. You could also use a 3.0 would look nice. The, I'd choose between one of those two. You could also use the triple stitch. Uh, you could also use, there's a few different decorative stitches there that would look really nice. Uh, I did not base the layers. I didn't really find the need because it's cut larger. Any other? I'll, I'll go back and watch and read a lot of these comments as well, too. Oh, yeah, I'll see you, Fashion Sewing Club, I'll see you at 2. <laughs> I'll see you in 45 minutes. I, Julie, I think so, too. There should be an award for that. <laughs> Okay, I think I got everyone. If I missed anyone, I apologize because I couldn't see all the questions while I was roaming, but uh, let's see. Oh, Elsa. We've got the Brother SE425. You know what? I don't know what's available on that machine off the top of my head. I haven't used it, uh, but there is a piece of plastic. Let's see if I have it here. I'll bring it up in the next one because I don't have it right here. Uh, it's like a piece of plastic comes in your hoop and you'll see like a grid on the inside. That's a great way to line up your patterns because as you go to rehoop, you'll know exactly where the embroidery is going to go. So check that out. It's like a little piece of plastic in there. Uh, Marie, there's no pattern. There's no pattern to this. You actually sew along and in each, all you need is a yard and a half of cotton outside a yard and a half for the inside a yard and a half of the lining and everything i listed at the beginning and in each section we're going to cut larger pieces to be able to do our embellishing and then we'll cut it down yep it sure will be julie i have darlene i have pockets on one side not both but we're doing pockets in the next lesson i believe which is next thursday so on the blog post tomorrow or in the newsletter this morning, I left a link to next week's show. It'll be live on Facebook and YouTube on Brother's channel. And next week we're going to be, let's see, what is the date next week? <laughs> Part two is next week and that's gonna be doing the pocket. So we're gonna be embroidering letters. We're gonna be, and starting to attach the straps. Sewing and decorating the pocket is gonna be our main thing next week. Then we go into cutting straps, constructing the straps and the bag. I'll give you some ideas for straps. So then you can either cut the fabric before the next session, or uh, you might want to go, I don't know, come up with some great trimmer stuff. So this is all. You, so before next week, you need to quilt your quilt and decorate your panels. Uh, Phyllis, it's just plain old fabric covering up the messy seam. Uh, thanks, Marianne. Uh, Judy, do you have any other videos where you use My Design Center? So Judy, if you go to Brother So's YouTube channel, you're on Facebook, go to their YouTube channel on the top side, click on Live, and you can scroll back. We did a lot of My Design Center about a year ago. We haven't done a lot since. And depending on what machine you have, uh, I do a lot of My Design Center in the Luminaire Masterclass and on the Stellaire Masterclass, but there's a ton of free stuff on Brother's YouTube channel. Check it out. 
Uh, this batting is not fleece. It is actually, um, well, I have it right here. I can't tell you the brand, but it's an insulation. Keeps you warm or cold. So it looks like batting, but it's not. Now, if all you have on hand is batting and you don't have this insulation, just use a piece of batting. That would be totally fine. It's still gonna look cute. It just won't keep your items hot or cold. And batting is different than fleece. Fleece is more of a, a dense fabric, I would say, kind of like, um, I don't know, I wear fleece a lot for jackets. Batting's a little bit looser, softer. And you could easily add pockets to both sides once I show you that next week. You're welcome, you're welcome. Okay, I think I got everyone. I'll check back tonight in case you're watching the replay. Drop your questions in here. Can you do a quick demo to show how to drop feed dogs? Sure, I'll show you real quick in case you decide to do that. Let me take it to the machine. Now this is, well, that's on the Stellaire, the Luminaire. They're both the same as far as where this goes. So I'll bring you back here. Depending on what machine you have, to drop your feed dogs. If you have one of the machines that has a screen where you're controlling it to do free motion, click here. Turn this off. Close. On the screen here, click right here. And that's the button. I'll bring you really close here. Right there. That drops your feed dogs. And it also tells you to use the open embroidery foot. If you want to back up, just hit click that. Some of the machines have a panel in the back of the machine. So if you don't have one of the machines that you can do this, some of them actually have where you have a panel in the back. Look right behind your feed dogs and then you might see a button back here. It's kind of, it's not chickified. It's, you have to push it and that will pull your feed dogs down as well. So I hope that helps. All right. I think I got everyone. If not, our hour is up. I got to run because we got Fashion Sewing Club here soon. Everyone, it was great to see you. I can't wait to see your bags. And be sure to leave comments for Brother if you like this sew along. And when you share what's happening here, be sure to add hashtag Brother Sews and hashtag Angela Wolf. The blog will be up tomorrow on my page if you want details. And I will also put this replay there and also check out Brother's Instagram page. It's where you'll find everything else. All right, everyone. Good luck and happy sewing. Until next time.